Now that the offseason is officially underway, it's time for all of us to brace ourselves for what I believe is going to be a pretty crazy one. There are rumors flying left and right surrounding some of the biggest names in the sport, and while there typically are every year, this year we could see things hit a whole new level. All of the speculation should be taken with a grain of salt though, and some big shakeups may come out of nowhere, and all of this leads us to today's video. Today I will be making 5 bold predictions for the 2024 NBA season that I don't think are necessarily expected to happen by most, but could come about and surprise everybody. Before we start though, it turns out a good amount of you watching right now aren't even subscribed to the channel, so if you enjoy the content, consider hitting the subscribe button, as not only does it help out a ton, but it also very much appreciate it. Now with that being said, let's begin. The first bold prediction that I have for this offseason is that Klay Thompson will leave the Golden State Warriors. It's hard to imagine a world where Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, and Draymond Green don't lace them up together in the Warriors lineup after over a decade together, but this summer presents a crossroads for this team, and there is no easy answer to the situation that they find themselves in. The Warriors missed the playoffs this year, and have no plans of blowing up the roster and rebuilding, so all moves made going forward have to be for the benefit of the team, which then leads them to some difficult decisions that need to be made. Warriors owner Joe Lake has gone on record saying that the days of the Warriors massively overpaying and overspending and going way above the luxury tax are over, and one of their goals along with getting back in the playoffs is to make better financial decisions after having one of the biggest payrolls in the NBA for a while. Klay Thompson is a fantastic shooter still, but it's no secret that he's not the same player that he was pre-injury during the team's peak. He's coming off of a season scoring the fewest points per game that he's had since 2013, he didn't even shoot 40% from three after being a number where he used to breeze to that in his sleep, his shot selection is even more questionable now, and his defense is not what it once was either. I do still believe that he will receive some big offers from other suitors on the free agent market who are in need of some shooting, and the Warriors might look at those offers and decide not to match them. Clay could, of course, decide to take a discount to stay put, but if the right offer presents itself, I feel as though he could definitely be swayed. My next bold prediction for the offseason is that the Cleveland Cavaliers are going to trade one of their two star guards, being of course Donovan Mitchell or Darius Garland. The Cavaliers are another team entering a really important offseason for their future for a couple of different reasons. As many of you already know, there has been a bit of an elephant in the room for them, with Donovan Mitchell's future with the Cavaliers up in the air. He has just one year left on his current contract before hitting free agency, and the Cavaliers originally traded for him because they wanted him to be a big part of their plans for the foreseeable future, but Mitchell and his camp have expressed hesitation to sign a long-term contract extension, and time is running out to sort that out, otherwise they risk having him leave for nothing in return during next summer's free agency period. The obvious speculation as a result of this has been around the Cavaliers potentially cutting their losses and trading Mitchell this summer, while he still holds value, but another avenue they may also end up exploring is potentially trading Darius Garland for a piece or two that fit better alongside Mitchell to further convince him to stay. There isn't any bad blood or things like that between Mitchell and Garland, their fit in the same court is just a bit clunky. Garland was an all-star the year before Donovan Mitchell arrived in Cleveland, but since the two have paired up, there have been growing pains regarding how to get the most out of each other at the same time. Mitchell is more of a scorer by nature, but in the biggest games he likes to have the ball in his hands a lot to take over over the game, and Garland is more of a natural point guard who is at his best when given the freedom to run the offense, make plays for those around him, and initiate things with, again, the ball in his hands. His confidence has definitely taken a hit since Mitchell's arrival, so either way, I think they'll only have one or the other back next season. The next bold prediction that I have for the offseason is that the Utah Jazz will make one of the biggest splashes of the summer. When it comes to big moves that could potentially be made on the horizon, we've been hearing a lot of similar teams and names involved. The big names that could potentially be available always get linked to the same couple of contending teams that could go all in potentially, but the Utah Jazz very sneakily are flying under the radar as a group with every avenue available to them to shift their rebuild into high gear and take that next step. Laurie Markkinen is an all-star caliber guy that they brought in and got the best out of, which has led to his name being 
being involved in some trade rumors of his own, but realistically, Markkanen is part of the Jazz long-term plans, and with such a versatile forward scoring the basketball leading the way for their young group, they have a very solid starting point. The Jazz have the fourth most money to spend in free agency this summer. They have a whopping 12 first-round picks in their treasure chest over the next five years. They have a good mix of veterans on team-friendly contracts and salary filler to include in trade offers, giving them the ability to put together a trade package as good as anyone in the league for a star. The Jazz may not be the flashiest team or the group that dominates the headlines, but I'm a really big fan of what they've been putting together during their rebuild, and it would not surprise me at all to see them in the mix with some of the biggest stars in the sport, depending on who requests a trade and what kind of fit they would be, because they have the assets to make things happen. My next bold prediction for the offseason is that Jimmy Butler will leave the Miami Heat. I've talked a lot about the big names that could potentially be on the move this summer, and Jimmy Butler is definitely one I think will surprisingly join that list. There isn't a confirmed trade request at this point, nor is there anything substantial or close to it yet, but there's definitely been a lot of smoke here, and where there's smoke there's usually some sort of fire. Jimmy Butler has always had a big personality who speaks with confidence and will not hold back from giving his thoughts, and this summer he was vocal about how he thought the Heat would have beaten the Celtics if he was healthy in the playoffs. In the end of the season press conference, Miami Heat president Pat Riley would then go on to call Jimmy out for talking as much as he did, telling him not to speak up unless he's contributing on the court, which gave the impression that there's a bit of a rift between Butler and the team's front office. And we've seen how a situation like that can go down before after Jimmy's fallout with the Timberwolves. Butler has also given small hints here and there, including an interview he gave at a WNBA team's game, the LA Sparks, where he jokingly said, said that the number 22 looks pretty good in the LA purple and gold. The truth of it all is that Jimmy is 35 years old and a bit injury prone now, and it's becoming difficult to rely on him being a true number one option throughout a full 82 game regular season, with how much that he likes to coast and preserve himself for the playoffs. The Heat need Jimmy at his best all the time to be a true contender, but he's not able to give them that over 82 games, which is why they've been in the play-in tournament in back-to-back -back years. So that, plus a potential rift with the front office could lead to the Heat trying to go in a different direction before contract extension talks begin, and if that happens, then plenty of teams will have interest in acquiring Butler for his playoff heroics. And finally, my last bold prediction for the offseason is that the Orlando Magic will land either Paul George or Trey Young. The Magic got their first taste of playoff basketball as a young, rising group this season, but with it came some very valuable lessons as well. This Magic team has done an outstanding job getting young and hungry talent to buy into a strong, disciplined defensive identity that resulted in the team ranking as the third best defense in the league this year, but the playoffs made it very clear they are severely lacking in offensive firepower, and addressing that should be their number one priority this summer. Paolo Bencaro is a a rising star that's showing he's ready for big moments, but he needs help, and the two places the Magic could afford an upgrade at is at point guard and on the wing. Orlando has the third most money to spend in free agency this summer, so they're one of the few groups that can offer Paul George big money to lure him away from the Clippers, but with Trey Young, I think that could be one of the sneakier deals that could get done this summer. The Hawks aren't going anywhere with their current core, and there have already been rumblings that either Trey Young or DeJounte Murray could be moved, and honestly, I can't think of a better fit for Trey Young than Orlando. Trey needs to be in a team that's capable of overcoming his individual defense defensive limitations, which the Magic absolutely are, as they excel defending off the ball, rotating exceptionally well, and switching. They also desperately need some creativity in their offense, and Trey has been one of the best playmakers in the entire league since he's been drafted, coming off of a season where he averaged 26 points and 11 assists per game. Orlando also has quite a few first-round picks available to be traded over the next five years, and they also have players that they can include in a trade offer like that, such as Cole Anthony, Wendell Carter Jr., and Joe Ingles just to make the money work. So that's something I'll definitely be keeping my eye on. And with that being said, that's all I have for you today. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below some of your bold predictions for this offseason. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.